So for me, it was it was really really a good experience because uh, it's one thing to work on an audio mix when you're sitting with the video uh, director in the same room, you know, to talk about the concept and to say, oh, let's do this, let's do that, and uh, doing it doing it remotely uh, over a period of forty eight hours. It was really interesting because. I feel like so. This was my first 48-hour film festival in a in a production point of view, you know. And for me, it really felt like a, a good game of trust, you know. You, uh, the video animation team, you know, you're doing your thing over there, and we've got the script, and we're recording it over here. And it was just such a phenomenal experience to work like that and to see it come together, and then to to hear the dialogue and then to hear, for example, Barbara's, Gracie's character speaking and responding to the dialogue, even though she wasn't even there when we recorded it. It was just a very um, interesting experience, you know? And for myself, I think I definitely yeah. have some, some, some things that I learned and things that I want to try and things that I want to validate for the next time. modeling yeah i know you missed one of this part so for example in this case uh this was the ufo um what we did here was trying to go fast you know this is a very simple model yeah so so this this take uh very very uh, little time to do so all we did here was to create a cube and is, um, from the queue, what we did here, we started to scale a little bit and and do it these kind of things, you know, mm. and and that was that was the idea. Like, so you can see here the time, and yeah. what we do here is like to subdivide, and yeah. and then we do some smooth and something like this. So we try to. We, we try to be very, very simplistic in some things. Mm -hmm. uh, so like this, for example, like, okay, let's, let's move on, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. something like this. And then what we do was sub keep subdividing and smoothing the vertex until we get what we need. So something like this. Right. So just to give up better looking, just some quick, tester painting and that's it you know um i think that was that was very important for the for the film because we don't we didn't have enough time so that was like the things to go so that's why you see some models were not so detailed but yeah, at yeah. least like this one what did you think about the ufo sound <laughs> That was that was pretty cool. So how do how did you? So um, I the two layers of me. Um, so the main base layer is a recording of the fridge, right? So the fridge here in my apartment has the sound like boom, 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 you know that kind of like rumble sound which I recorded, and then on top of that, Ooh. I I with my mouth I just tried to make a sound like a wave kind of kind of sound. I recorded that twice in different, different pitches. And, uh, and then on top of that, there are two tracks of me whistling. Like that. And I, I mix them, you know, and fan them in stereo in a certain way that it's kind of sounds uh, like there's some phasing going on. So, that was the sound of the, the, um, the UFO. What I would have liked to have done was to add some movement Doppler effect, you know, uh, to, the, to the UFO, like, you know, like, like that stereo Doppler pattern yeah. effect. But, but I think that that's, that's something that uh, I realized, like, I need in my checklist some sort of... Uh, some sort of questions to ask the video or the animation person, in this case, you, like, hey, like, how is the UFO moving or something? Because I could have added some motion sound effects as well, but I didn't really know in which direction it's moving, you know? 
so, yeah, so I think like 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 for the next time uh, adding motion uh, to the audio is something that I want to try to do also and to do yeah, it that's is it's very it's very cool that you whistle and you use it, uh, your your refrigerator <laughs> So that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that this is another thing that I wanted to show. This is the real color of the. I put alien, the I put know? the microphone inside the refrigerator, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as voices go, I've always done voices kind of just naturally. Um, I'm I well, I, I'm known for t telling stories, and anytime I tell a story of any given situation uh, in real life. I like to act the parts out because I like to bring you and my audience as close to the reality of the situation as possible. And I do that through uh, imitating voices. And anytime there is a, a very distinct voice amongst a group of people, I almost always latch onto that and act it out. So I've been known amongst friends for imitating, imitating people at work or at school or whatever. Um, and then I used to also do voices for uh, Snapchat, when Snapchat first released their filters that change your face, like I just look at these faces and I get an idea of a voice and I just try to, to replicate it. So that's kind of what happened with these characters. Of course, there's some influence. Uh, the little green man to me is a uh, like a stereotypical short man syndrome is how I explain it with like this kind of like, I don't know, New York cross with a Boston, I don't know, accent. I don't know. It just is like an accent that comes to my mind. Um, the big guy, uh, the owner in the orange shirt, was actually an influence by a friend I went to high school with. Uh, I always uh, imitated his voice. My parents love it. Um, and then the, uh, the sheriff I had some trouble with. Uh, I think if I were to give it another chance, uh, I would do a much better job. But it was kind of like a cross between like some a country person and people I met in the city downtown in, uh, in St. Louis where I'm from. So that's where I got the, uh, the influences for those voices. So the owner is the suspect, then we want the same things. I'm going to write this on a piece of paper here, the name of the place where I saw this guy last night. Now, how about you go on and drop your gun about... Was this, um, you know, transformation? So the beginning I was thinking, okay, he saw the transformation, but during the work, I, I, I understand, okay, I don't have enough time to do the transformation. Mm -hmm. So how we solve that? So how do you solve that? You don't, you can not see the transformation itself. So what I did was okay. I think um, the best to do here, in my case, will be like you know. Um, let me see renders here. So let's do it with the camera. I don't know if a uh, script, you know? Mm. Mm. And um, how do you transform? So this is very, very cool because what I thought was, okay, if he's, if, if the Ellen is informing, it will take a lot of time in animation. So the, it's better if I can do this to explain that he become, he grows, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you've got the sound of the. Yeah, and that sound. Yeah. So, with that was exactly less less time yeah yeah but send the same message like you this this guy was small and became a big alien so with the camera movement there was easy to animate a camera yeah the characters there yeah that start creating a, a real animation transformation so, so so maybe maybe you know you can you can you can come to the conclusion that possibly for animation projects, whenever you need to show scale that something is growing, uh, you can, instead of uh, actually creating the object that you animate, do the camera. You're right, that creates the same effect. Exactly, so that was- And if you have time, I, can, I imagine you can have a shadow that also grows, that makes it look like the, the, the person, this object is getting bigger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was very, that was very cool and I there so that's also pretty quick to do and I was thinking okay how do I do this beam so that what you see there is a spotlight mm. animated spotlight mm. so that's an anim animated spotlight and when she start start traveling uh, then she stays there 
but the the UFO comes in. So that was that was also pretty fun to do. But mm. one thing that I found is I, I wanted another shot that was not in the original script. And I so okay, this is very easy to do because what you have to do is you already animate everything else and you just place the mm. camera in know part and, and that's the cool thing mm. on, on on 3D animation is that the actor acts is exactly the same way. Yeah. It's not like in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In real life, you have to go there and, okay, let's do it again from this. And the actor has to do it. Yeah. Maybe he moves the hand in another way. In animation, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I discovered this was pretty easy because the actor is going to do the same performance. Every time. You just place Every the camera time. in a different spot. Yeah. Wow, that's fabulous. So that's one of the things that help us a lot to give different camera angles in a very short time. Yeah, so yeah. this was very, very cool like scene. Uh, I really like uh, like this, what you have in mind and you get, so you can see there. Yeah, yeah. And you, what you get is pretty, so yeah, it's, it gives you at least the placing. I know there was a, you know, a, a painting behind them. I do the stand. At least one thing that I was thinking how I differentiate each character is is using hats. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was the that was things that every character has a different hat. Yes, exactly. To give them their own way and different color because they are the same character just with. Yeah. And little changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have enough yeah. time. To... Like, like, like Lego characters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... But you know, the thing is, like, I didn't really notice it till you said it. So actually, the effect works perfectly. You don't realize, you know. <laughs> yeah, the hats. Yeah, there. I think they cause enough distraction that I, you know, I like. I didn't really realize it the first time I saw it, but it was the same model. Yeah, it's the same old, just different hats. Yeah. Uh, and that was cool because different hats means different roles. No, I understand that when you talk about, okay, I have this hat, the manager had the... So that was, that was also cool. Mm. One thing that I, I, if I could do better if I got more time was the car. <laughs> that was the faster car I, I, I modeled. You can see there is a cylinder over here. <laughs> So yeah, I, I didn't have enough time. I was trying to download one, but definitely there was not a car with a with the court license. Mm. You know, so I had to okay, I say, okay, let's stop here. This is one of the most important things that I learned from this was if you don't have something what you want, what you like, at the beginning I was I, I if I don't have the car right now, I think I have to make a decision quick because I, I cannot waste more time mm. trying to find the right license for, for the car model. Mm. So what I did, okay, I can do this pretty fast and all I need is something that looks like a car. So that was mm. that was this. Um, but I think it worked pretty well because this was an animated movie for kids. Um, so yeah, the, this... Uh, really gave me like two more hours of work. If I was looking for the right car, I would waste that time. So I think for animation, different from what we have done in the past, is we we have to make decision fast. Mm -hmm. So if this doesn't work, let's go from this way and this way. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, it's more like solving problems and keep going. Okay, there is no car, let's do it. Uh, uh, this shot doesn't work. Okay, let's keep doing doing and i was seeing that all the time like okay i have this time to make this scene i have this time to make this other scene and the time i was looking on the clock all the time you know like okay i have a spending 30 minutes in this scene uh, or in this part most that i was expecting or the, the initial eta so let's let's cut this and here and one thing that uh, at the end, I think that way of thinking, so a lot of problem was the final 
the final scene. In the final scene, uh, there was there was this shot. Uh, I think is yeah, it's this one. So this is the groin, you know. So mm -hmm. if you reverse this shot. You get when the UFO goes. If you reverse yeah. that shot, you yeah, get comes back. Comes back. So you yeah. have two shots from okay. one, yeah. and that saves rendering time. Mm. Me, the same meaning. So you know, the first time they are looking when the alien is there, mm. and the second time, if you reverse the shot, you are getting okay. The UFO goes away. Wow! So, yeah. You know, it's just, just the reverse. So yeah, that yeah. save yeah. us. Yeah. With that decision, save us three hours of wow. rendering to use that in another thing. So that kind of things are important. So uh, you have to decide. You okay? I don't have this. I, I I know you made the same decisions for sound. Okay, this and and you have to do it all the time. It's different because in, in the competition, you don't have, you cannot waste time. Mm. And I really, mm. I really enjoyed that because I, I realized, okay, I don't have to do another render. I can use the reverse shot. Mm. Okay. Mm. Times. And you know what else was reverse shot and was very, very cool is when, when this is when it comes. So I decide this when I was animating. I, I don't know if you can notice that he's moving to the left. Yeah. So okay. he's not shot because now if I want to show that the UFO is going, I just re reverse the shot. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. And I just move the camera a little bit in editing and then I have from one shot, I have from one rendering, I have two shots that I needed. Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just one rendering and three hours more of rendering time and animation, everything. So that's those kind of decisions are, are, are important to, to save us time in the rendering. Um, what else was here? Also, we have only one shot of this guy. So it was also reversed. So see, just one animation, and then we do the reverse. And we cut, intercut the two shots, you know, um, with, the, with, the, with this one. So like this, we little standard and without looking too much. Mm -hmm. And was, yeah. And those were the secrets to save time during the rendering because this was, you know, very, 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 very uh, adjusted in time. Wow. Well, but As you revealed me great. your secrets of the refrigerator and that's those, those were, those were my animation secrets. <laughs> <laughs>